Well, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you inviting me here. It's an honor to be here. Honor to represent Facebook um, and come back to the semiconductor world where I spent more than a decade um, at Motorola and other companies uh, doing everything I think I possibly could. And in the space, um, prior, I was at Intel leading strategy for ML, uh, mainly on the software side. Uh, and then after that at Amazon, uh, leading a product team uh, focused on machine learning and, and building a platform, which is now SageMaker, if anybody's heard of SageMaker, um, uh, as well as open source. And I spent the last, now two years at Facebook uh, doing similar uh, as a product lead uh, for, for PyTorch. And we, we've seen quite the ascension uh, of PyTorch. Uh, we're certainly not as broadly focused um, as, as TensorFlow. Uh, but, uh, but certainly we've seen a lot of adoption um, and you know, PyTorch is, is an existential framework for, for Facebook. Uh, it's, it's actually how we train, how we deploy um, a lot of our ML, actually all of our ML um, across computer vision, NLP, uh, translation, uh, personalization as ranking. Uh, we do on the order of um, several hundred uh, trillion predictions a day, um, several hundred, um, on the order of 400 plus. Uh, and we also deploy to over a billion devices, uh, local neural nets doing various things, computer vision, uh, augmented reality, uh, you know, ranking, um, predictive text, there's a whole number of, of applications. Um, so, you know, on-device actually, as a company, has been something that we've been doing, uh, especially with deep learning for, you know, probably four or five years now at least. Uh, it's been, hasn't been a, a pretty way uh, for us to get it there on device, but uh, we haven't deployed them onto Android phones and iOS uh, for quite some time. So today I'll talk about um, PyTorch on device. I'll give a little bit of a history lesson of, of kind of where PyTorch came from and the motivations, um, the platform itself. I will get into the, the guts of it. I will show a little bit of code uh, and uh, kind of how we end up um, interacting with devices uh, on the back end of the framework. Um, so starting out with, with really this overview of, um, of the principles and the makeup of the framework, what is a framework? A lot of people actually don't really know what's, what's, what's in the framework. Um, this whole dynamic versus static, um, you know, eager mode has become kind of this, this buzzy word or buzz phrase. Um, how does that differ between like the declarative or static frameworks? Um, the state of the state from, from PyTorch's perspective, like how do you actually take a graph um, out of PyTorch and deploy it onto a device. There's actually a couple of different ways to do it. Um, and then talk uh, a little bit about PyTorch Mobile was something we open sourced uh, in October um, and really provides this end-to-end -end experience um, you know, from this dynamic Pythonic environment um, over to uh, an on-device uh, experience that, that can improve latency and privacy and so on. 